Hey, it's Vanessa from CraftyGemini.com. Today's tutorial is on how to make cloth wipes. They look like this. They're made up of two layers of cotton flannel. Um, since we cloth diaper our baby, these are the wipes that I use to wipe him down. You can also use them just to clean up any spill ups or if the baby spits up or keep them in your car for any kind of messes. They're great because they're reusable, they're cotton, and they last a very long time. I'll be showing you today two different techniques on how you can put these together. Here I have two square pieces of the cotton flannel fabric. I've cut it to nine inches square. This is the size that I find works best for me. Because I have a big hand, you can see that the nine inches square still gives me enough space around, and so it allows me to clean up diaper messes very well. With the two layers, it's ultra absorbent and it's great. So this is what works out best for me. If you maybe want to have some to side into a, a side pocket of your diaper bag or your purse, feel free to make them six inches square, seven, eight, just Try it out on different pieces of fabric and see what size works best for you. In this case, the first technique I'm going to show you is how to put the wipe together using a serger. So if you will be using a serger, you need to make sure that your pieces of fabric have the ugly sides touching. Okay, that means the wrong sides of the fabric are touching, just like you see here. Now we'll take it over to the serger and you'll see how quick we'll put this cloth wipe together. I'm ready to start stitching my cloth wipe in my serger. For instructional purposes, I'm using black thread so you can see the contrast of the thread on the fabric. But if this were a real cloth wipe that I'm putting together, I'd probably use either a white or one of these pastel colored threads, okay? I'm just going to start off in one corner. Just let the serger do its job. When I get to the corner, I like to stop almost to the edge with the needle up. I'll lift up my presser foot. I pivot, pull a little bit of the fabric, pivot it and make sure that I'm putting the, that right angle corner of the fabric right underneath the needle so that it starts right at that corner and keeps going down. Otherwise, I'll get a gap in the fabric since the serger stitches continuously. Okay, so I'll put the presser foot back down and stitch again. Again, stop with the needle up in the corner, presser foot up, pivot your fabric, bring that corner right underneath your needle, Put the presser foot back down and stitch again. One more time. I do the same thing on all four corners and you'll see I'll be done in a second. And there's my cloth white. All the corners are concealed and kept from fraying because of the serger. And the wipe is done. If you don't have a serger and all you have is your regular at-home sewing machine, this technique is the way that you'll want to put together your cloth wipe. So here I have the 9-inch square uh, pieces of the cotton flannel that I cut. Okay, And in this case, we're going to now line up the pieces of fabric with the pretty sides touching. It means I'm going to put it like this. So pretty side and pretty side, make sure that they're touching. I'm going to line up my raw edges. Okay, And now I'm going to pin it in place because this is the way we'll be stitching on the machine. So as you start off and you're first learning how to sew, you may want to put in a few more pins than you see me putting here. But as you get better control of your machine and of the fabric, you'll realize that you'll only need a few pins on each side. So I'll turn it and make sure, you know, go putting them in, lining up the raw edges so it's all lined up. And we're almost ready to stitch. Before I actually start stitching, what I like to do is to take some kind of a chalk marker or erasable um, ink marker, something, just so that I can mark my fabric reminding me not to stitch in this area because, for example, between these two pins, I'm going to make this line right here with my yellow chalk marker just so that as I'm stitching around my cloth wipe, I remind myself not to stitch in this area. This is a place where I'll have to leave this open so that I can flip the cloth wipe inside out. So when you start stitching, you'll want to start stitching at the bottom side of the marked line, okay? So I'm going to stitch here, come all the way around, and stop at the top of this line in order to leave my yellow area that's marked um, unstitched. So I'll start off at the bottom, and you want to back stitch because when you flip your fabric inside out, you don't want the stitches to come apart, okay? So I'll take a few back stitches there. When I get to the corner, I want to stop with the needle in on the fabric, lift my presser foot up, and that, you see how my fabric can pivot, but it's not moving out of place because the needle's still holding it down. So now I'll turn it this way, press your foot down, and continue to stitch. Remember to stop stitching before you reach those pins, okay? Don't ever stitch over pins.
I'll show you this corner again. Stop. Whatever the seam allowance is that you're using, in this case it's the edge of the foot, so it's about a little less than half an inch. I'll stop with the needle down about that distance from this edge. Remember with the needle down, lift the foot up. You see how I can swing it all the way around but the fabric won't pull out. Okay, very important to have your needle down. Pivot the fabric, bring the foot back down, and continue stitching. As you can see, I've come all the way around and I'm almost to my starting point at the beginning of the top yellow line right here where I want to stop. So I'll stitch right up to it and then remember to back tack. So I took a few back steps, um, back stitches there. And this is what your cloth wipe should look like, okay? You want to have that area opened. Now what I want to do is to trim off the corners so that when I flip this inside out, there's not that much bulk. Okay, what you want to do is the angled corner right there, I want to trim this at an angle close to the peak of that edge. Okay, and then I like to take a little bit off the sides. Make sure that you don't clip into your stitches. So it should look something like that. I'll do it again on another corner. Come out at an angle to the tip of that corner and then trim off the excess on the sides. Okay, and you want to do that to all four corners. So as you can see, I'm done trimming all four corners and I have this space still open here. Next step is to turn your cloth wipe inside out. What I like to do is to go to one of the corners, stick my thumb all the way up in that corner, pinch it with my pointer finger, and flip it out. Okay? Do that with one corner. I'll do the same thing to all four corners before I flip the rest of it out. So again, thumb in the corner, pinch it with my pointer finger, and flip it out. Okay? I got two more. The last one. And there's my cloth wipe. Now as you can see it looks a little bit messy. What you want to do next is to press. So I'll kind of run it out with my fingers like this to make that seam come out right there. And just hit it with an iron. Do it to all four sides. So now after I've pressed my cloth white, remember we had this hole still here. So what I like to do is called top stitching and basically I'm going to take a straight stitch and go all the way around um, my entire cloth white and as I do that I'm going to try to stay close to the edge and what that's going to do is it's then going to hold in and close up that hole. Okay? So I'll just start anywhere on my fabric. Remember to stop a little bit ways from the edge with your needle down so that you can pivot your fabric. And do the same thing on all four sides. So I finished stitching all the way around and where I began I went ahead and back tacked and took a few more stitches over the initial stitches I made to make sure and secure those stitches in place. So that's it, my cloth wipe is ready, ready to use.